a fascinating story. The gentleman's name is John List. He's worked for many companies and Uber hired him as their chief economist. He then later became Lyft's chief economist, right? <clears throat> but the story is fascinating. Something happened between him and the Uber app where they screwed up. He was furious. He called Travis Kalanick, right? And he noticed that the company did not have the ability to say sorry. So they hired this guy, the man who taught Uber how to say sorry. But here's the thing. Where he horribly failed, his mission is that he only concentrated on the rider. He tried out different techniques towards the rider. How, how do we Uber apologize to the rider, right? And they found that the best strategy was to reward them with a $5 credit. So as a rider, all you had to do is complain, bitch and moan, and you would get an apology and five bucks. But where he failed his mission, horribly in my eyes, is that he never focused on the driver. Uber and John List failed their mission because they failed to apply the same reasoning, the same techniques, cozying up only to the rider. They failed to use that strategy towards the driver. When a driver got deactivated, wrongfully terminated, didn't get their money, or had a problematic rider, you know, did you get an apology from them? Did you get some sort of financial reward from them because they screwed up? No. They focused exclusively on the rider. Now, I want to read you a little bit of, about this guy's background. Um, so you've played Candy Crush, flown on United Airlines, or taken an Uber or a Lyft. You've been in one of Professor John List's experiments without even knowing it right? List has revolutionized economics research through his pioneering use of field experiments. A field experiment is conducted in the real world instead of in a lab, testing theories on people in their day-to-day -day lives. List's experiments have changed the world by equipping policymakers with real-world data to address issues like climate change, the gender pay gap, and why inner city schools fail. But now he's warning of a crisis that's threatening the impact of scientific research. Many studies that claim to tell us something about the world fall apart when you test them on a larger scale. It's something he calls the scale up problem. And I do believe that Uber and Lyft have that scale up problem. But back to the article. So the headline and this is by the uh, BBC. The headline is The Man Who Taught Uber How to Say Sorry. Right? In January 2017, John List was due to give a keynote speech at a prestigious gathering of economists. He picked up his phone using the Uber app, booked a cab to take him the 30-minute journey from his home. He looked up briefly as the car sped along. Lakeshore Drive on the banks of Lake Michigan and took in the view of the approaching city with his fabulous skyline of skyscrapers. Then he settled back down to work on his talk, right? So there he is working in the car, not paying attention. Then he was so busy with the work, List was furious, uh, but wait, what made him more so was that the Uber never sent him an apology, right? And that was after about 20 minutes later, he looked up again. Surely he must be nearly there now. Oh no, he screamed. He was back where he'd began. Something had gone wrong with the Uber app, which had instructed the driver to return to the professor's home. She had not wanted to disturb him as he was so engrossed in his work. This is the point where List was understandably furious, but what made him more so was that Uber never sent him an apology. Right, so what did he do? Not everyone who has a complaint to make with Uber has access to its chief executive, but John List did. And so he rang up Travis Kalanick that evening. This was not long before Kalanick was forced to step down as a result of sharehold pressure. 
following a series of controversies over companies' practices, including its handling of sexual harassment allegations. After List had related the tale and let off a bit of steam, Kalanick spoke. What I want to know, he said, is how Uber should apologize when this sort of cock-up occurs. What's the best way to keep Uber customers loyal, right? What's the best way, Travis asked, to keep Uber customers loyal, even when they've had a miserable experience. How to apologize is a question which every company is interested to know the answer. And John List was in a unique position to find out. Not many people with John List's background become leading academics. He grew up in a working class family in Sun Prairie, northeast of Wisconsin Capital Medicine. His dad was a lorry driver and expected his son to enter the family business. John had other ideas. His dream was to become a professional golfer, and he won a golf scholarship to college. There he discovered two things. First, he wasn't as good at golf as he had once thought, and second, he was fascinated by economics. He's now on the economics faculty at one of America's top universities, the University of Chicago, but for a few years, He's also been moonlighting because Uber approached him to be their chief economist. And after he moved from Uber, he joined another car riding app, Lyft, where he holds the same position. So he was the chief economist at Uber and then moved over to Lyft as their current chief economist. No doubt the job is generously remunerated, obviously makes a lot of money there. But for John List, it has another appeal. For data geeks, car apps are like gold mines. In the U.S. alone, before the pandemic, there were 2 million Uber drivers making tens of millions of trips each week. John List has spent his career studying economic behavior in the real world. So working with Uber was a dream come true. Uh, with his cornucopia of information, he could analyze all sorts of consumer preferences, what kinds of cars people like, how far they typically traveled, and at what times, how they responded to change in the price of fares. Hmm, how they responded to the change of price of, in, in the price of fares. He could also learn the best way to apologize. His first step was to look at what happened to Uber users, riders, right, users, after they had a bad ride, one that had taken much longer than the app had initially predicted, and it would end up um, taking 23 minutes. By crunching the numbers, he and his collaborators discovered that riders who experienced such a bad ride would spend up to 10% less on Uber in the future. That represented a significant loss of earnings for the car app. And the next move was to come up with a variety of apologies and to randomly try them out on those who'd experienced a bad trip. Again, riders. It turns out there's a sort of science of sorry. Social scientists and psychologists, psychologists in particular have studied what kinds of apologies work, but John List had a big advantage. He could actually measure the impact. He calls one type of sorry the basic apology. We note that your trip took longer than we predicted, and we sincerely apologize. A more sophisticated apology involves an admission that the company messed up. Another type of apology involves a commitment. We will try to ensure that this will not happen again. On Uber's behalf, John List tried them all. What's more, with some of these apologies, Uber offered a $5 discount off the next trip. In the experiment, there was also a group of Uber customers who received no apology at all. The result was surprising. On their own, apologi apologies in whatever form proved ineffective, but an apology coupled with a $5 coupon kept many people loyal. So if we end up bringing back millions of dollars by assuaging consumers with an apology and a coupon, what consumers want, it turns out, is for a company to, to demonstrate its remorse by taking a material financial hit. But looking deeper into the stats, Liss realizes 
that even this device ceased to work if there was a second or third bad trip. Indeed, a second or third apology only seemed to alienate customer, customers further. There are invaluable insights for Uber and other businesses too. Many economists sit at their desks and make predictions about economic, based, uh, economic activity based on their models. What makes John List a little unusual for an economist is that he likes to test theories out in the real world. He conducted experiments from Tanzania to New Zealand, China to Bangladesh. The vast digital data sets held by Uber and other car apps have enabled him to identify certain quirks in human behavior that armchair economists might not have uncovered. For example, when you book an Uber, you never know whether you'll get a male or female driver. So you might expect male and female drivers to earn the same. But in fact, male drivers earn about 7% more per hour than their female counterparts. Shocked by this disparity, List set about trying to find out the reason for it. He uncovered several explanations. One is that women tend to have more childcare responsibilities, so there are fewer female drivers available at lucrative times, such as morning and afternoon rush hour. But by four but by far the most important factor turns out to be speed. Uber driving men drive on average about 2.5% faster than Uber driving women, so they give more rides per hour. Uh, that's not the only gender gap because he thought it would make Uber drivers happier. List persuaded the Uber board to add a tipping function, bringing Uber in line with other caps. So John List persuaded them to introduce the uh, tipping platform. Interesting, right? It transpired men give around $5. What's more, women drivers receive more tips than male drivers, except when those women drivers are 65 years or older. I think we can take this, a fur this as further evidence of male shallowness. The study of economic behavior through car app data has been called Ubernomics. Though John List's box of data toys is now delivered to him by Lyft, not Uber, and he continues to produce a stream of fascinating results, analyzing the behavior of Lyft users. He's recently computed the power of what he calls left digit bias. Cutting the price of a journey from $15 to $14.99 has roughly the same impact on consumer demand as reducing it from $15.99 to $15. Some of the discoveries and discoveries in Ubernomics are unsurprising. Consumers care about price. The lower the cost, the more likely we are to book a cab. But the analysis of how we use car apps is also revealing some of the biases and idiosyncrasies of human economic behavior. By the way, if, you've ever, if you ever decide to become an Uber driver and think that being nice to the customer will have a significant impact on your income, there's some bad news. I'm afraid it won't. Even when customers rate one driver 10% higher than the other for niceness, John List says they both receive the same type of tip. So what, what you and I probably did not know, what I did not know is that this guy is behind most of the Uber and Lyft experiments and advises them, makes the adjustments when, you know, when it comes to adjusting our pay, etc. But what, what got him hired, what got him hired is that he had a very, very bad experience with Uber. He was pissed off. He called Uber, Travis Kalanick, personally and said, listen, what's up? So the conversation went in the direction, this is a brief recap, that Travis Kalanick brought him on board as a chief economist, right, to find the ways to say sorry to the rider. And this is where I say John List effed up. And I want to use an example. I want to use a personal example. And it's not like I'm trying to feel sorry for myself here, but... There were, there were many a times when I, as an Uber driver, was expecting an apology or expecting a price correction or expecting a $10, $20 uh, 
compensation to make a wrong right by Uber. Hardly ever happened. And in mid-2019, after four or five years slugging away, bringing the company thousands and thousands and thousands of drivers, literally helped build their company along with Dustin, Harry Campbell, Rideshare Report, some of the the biggest recruiters in the industry, I'd, I'd count myself in there in the top 10, right? Maybe the third highest recruiter for Uber. And that when I calculated the value that I had brought Uber and Lyft, probably $100 million a piece, right? Because some of those drivers that I brought in are now on 20, 22,000 trips. So the work that I put in, the value that I generated for the company was never rewarded. And other people like, you know, uh, Dustin and other drivers, I don't think were truly ever rewarded or given the gratitude. Instead, what happened, they found ways to deactivate these top earners, including myself. And to this very day, obviously, I'm fighting in court. I'm owed several hundred thousand dollars by each company, right, for helping them build the company. And they just simply cut me off from those monies and said, you know what, we found a way to deactivate you. We're not paying you out. And thus, they freed up hundreds of thousands of dollars on my end. They freed up over a million dollars from a San Francisco recruiter and, and, and. But every single day, I get the emails and text messages from Uber drivers and Lyft drivers. Hey, I was wrongfully deactivated. I was terminated over a wrongful report. Where John List failed horribly. And listen up, John List. Where you failed horribly at Uber and at Lyft. As you, because you never found the way how to say sorry to the drivers. You put all the efforts on the people who were paying the fare, the riders. You did not invest any efforts to learn how to say sorry with the people that were actually hauling the money in, paying your salaries, paying Travis's salaries, paying all the other salaries. So uh, as brilliant as this man claims he is, or as brilliant as he is, right, because they use this um, they use this term here, big brains. I wouldn't go that far. I think the guy has great brains. I think the guy is a brilliant brain. But he also has a lot of weaknesses because he focused too much on what the company tried to achieve. And that is cozy up to one group of people only, namely the rider. I would sincerely hope that John List would come onto my show and show us and demonstrate to us if they made any efforts to ever apologize to drivers or to make the wrongs right to drivers. Now, at this point, I want to give my um, sponsor, Cova, a shout out. Cova is a gig protection plan, starts at $7 per month. Uh, the link is below. You get one month free of charge when you sign up under my link. Um, they service the entire gig industry. If you get wrongfully terminated, something I spoke about uh, in this video, uh, the company Cova, along with Legal Rights, she goes out, sends out the legal letters and tries to get you back in the game. It's a big one because you suddenly, out of the blue, you're a 4.95, five rated drive and you were cut off for one wrongful report where they failed to apologize to you, right? And um, they try to get you back into the game. The other one, I've had him on the show, Bryant Greening, which is one of the heavy hitters at Legal Rideshare, they have focused exclusively on uh, the law in the rideshare world, and they know it well. In fact, I'd say they know it the best. Guys in Chicago, and um, what they do for drivers and gig workers is phenomenal, because if things go wrong, right, if things go horribly wrong, worst case scenario, you were in a really bad accident, you got injured, your car was destroyed or totaled, as they say. The company kicks in. Just contact LegalRideShare.com. 
they will go after all of the damages, right? That you suffer from the injuries, that you suffer, uh, if your car suffers um, property damage, right? Or if you have any wage losses because you end up in hospital or because your car is in the body shop. Ladies and gentlemen, it can happen so fast. My, my world was literally turned upside down for three months because I got into a bad injury, right? Broke three bones in my leg and foot. Now, not from a car injury, but it could have easily happened in a car. And there would, would have been only one group that I would have called, and that is legal ride share, right? So never say never. God forbid it ever happens. But when you need these guys in your corner, this is where you need to go. So back to the uh, story of John List. And they say, yeah, how John List revolutionized economics by studying people in the real world. You and I were probably 99% sure about that, right? I'm pretty sure that 99%, um, there's a 99% chance that we were part of some of his studies, right? And again, I, w I would truly uh, love to have the man on the show and explain. And again, he was the former chief economist for Uber and he's the current chief economist for Lyft. How did you address this issue when it comes to drivers? I haven't seen anything yet. And the entire article concentrates on the rider, on the user only. So please explain to us what you did there. Thank you.